Welcome, this is the RPA Champion and in today's video we are going to be looking at the application modeler. So you will learn how to use the application modeler, how to connect to web browser application. There is a lot to say about the application modeler, but in today's video you will just get an idea of how it works. So the first thing that we need to do is create an object. Let's give it a name. So we will create an application modeler that connects to an internet application or to a web browser. So let's open our process, uh, our object, and let's click on the application modeler. Let's make this bigger. So we are presented with three options. The first one is to create a new application modeler with a name. We can either get an application modeler from a previous project or we can also choose not to use the application modeler with this project. Let's go with the first option. So as we said, we are going to connect to a uh, web browser. Since we installed the extensions for Chrome and for Firefox, we, uh, we have this choice that we can select Chrome, Firefox and Edge. Otherwise, there would only be the option for Internet Explorer. So you can also uh, create an application model for Windows applications. So for example, you want to integrate with a local application like the calculator or any other application that is installed locally, a Java-based application, web browsers, or a mainframe application. A mainframe application is like a DOS screen application. We will get into those. Those are a lot of fun also. So let's select browser. I will be using Google Chrome. So now, uh, we have, again, two choices. We can choose either a browser that is open already, or we can launch the browser from the executable file. This means that every time that we trigger our application, it's going to be launched from the executable file. So let's select launch from an executable file. And now let's put in the file, the file path, to the executable process of Google Chrome. So I have already copied the link to the executable file of Google Chrome and I will paste it into this box. Now you can also search for the, ex for the application that you want to execute by going into Browse. Let's click Next and here we can put in the URL that we want to uh, visit when we launch Google Chrome. So again, here I will paste the Google link and let's click Finish. Now we have created the application modeler. The first thing that we should do inside of the application modeler is that we can launch it. Now when we launch it, we see that Google Chrome has been opened and we are redirected to Google. Perfect. Everything is working fine. Now let's see another couple of functionalities. So here on this side, we are going to have the hierarchy of the different elements that we are going to spy or identify on, to, uh, on Google. For example, let's identify, as, as you can see, when I click identify, I'm presented with different uh, different boxes that are highlighting different elements on the on the window now if i click control and click on any one of these elements uh, blue prism is going to capture it and it's going to allow me to interact with that element so for example i can click on this button control and click and this is what i'm presented with these are uh, elements that help blue prism identify the button that we have just so if we press highlight this is it shows us that it has identified the button that we have clicked on now there is so much to tell you about the attributes the different attributes and how we can configure them and the different options but for now uh, let's keep it very high level and let's understand the main functionalities of the application model so now that we have created one element we can call this element button and later on as you practice and as you work with blue prism you will 
uh, adopt different naming conventions for all the different elements that we will create here. So we can also create an, another element or we can create a child to this element. So if we create an element, it's at the same hierarchy as this. If we create a child, it is just underneath the element that we just created. So for example, button, let's click on element and let's click identify again. And here again, we are presented to spy for something else. We can create, click on the search tab. And again, we have the different attributes. Now, if I click on highlight, it's going to show me the tab. Perfect, it means that it's working fine. Now, as you work with your application, this list is going to grow a lot. So it's very important to have a good naming convention. Uh, a few other things that you should uh, that you should keep in mind is that if you click on the highest element, you can change the parameters that you configured during the application wizard. And you can also go back to the application wizard from here. So this is the link to where we launch Google Chrome. This is the web address that is opened that is open directly and this is the name of our application model or of our application so that we can call it also in other objects great a few more things that you should know is here in identified usually to spy elements we click on just identified and we spied the elements via the browser way you should know that there is different different spying spying methods in blue prism i'm circling right now to the different methods by clicking out but we will get into each one of these methods in a dedicated and a separate video because there is a lot of information about them but you should just know that each method is used for spying uh, when another method fails so that you have a few different methods so that you can spy basically any application any tool any web browser any mainframe application and so on so let's exit let's exit this well let's actually spy this as well perfect and let's highlight to make sure that we have it something is not working so in this case i would have to work on my web element to make sure that uh, why it's not spying but this is not the objective of the video so uh, i want to show you that you can also spy the different elements via the application navigator so the application navigator is going to give you access to all of the different elements on the page so we could search for the different elements so for example as you can see i am uh, it's highlighting the different elements so I could integrate the elements directly from here and you see excellent so this is when you open the application modeler you, you can also open the UI application modeler so when we open this you we can also select different different UI elements that it has identified on the or user interface elements that it has identified on the page now these are also directly related to the spying mechanism from Prism, but we will get to that in a dedicated video so this is pretty much it about the application modeler i hope this was informative i hope this gave you an idea of how to use the application modeler how to get started how to spy your first elements on an on a web browser and how to just get started and understand how to use it. If you have any suggestions on how to improve my videos, what other topics I should cover, please let me know in the comments below. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for your attention. Have a great day.